What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we're here with my 2025 Tesla Model Y long range rear wheel drive. We're going to be doing some charge testing on a version four post version three cabinet, Tesla supercharger zero to 100 and 10 to 80% and going over all the data. Well, you're joining me inside now. We're gonna be going over all the data from my charging sessions. We're gonna be starting with a zero to 100% charging curve. Um, as usual, we have a fully preconditioned battery. Um, I've drained the vehicle down, so I'm following all the proper procedures to get the best uh, charging performance that I can out of the vehicle. Um, and let's pull up some of the stats that I'm gonna be showing you guys. So on the screen here, we have a recording of the Tesla screen itself. Uh, and then I also have overlaid some CAN data that I'm able to pull from the vehicle. So you can see here the battery temperatures, the actual battery state of charge, so not the actual displayed state of charge, that's why there's a discrepancy here. Um, the voltage, current, and on this screen you're actually going to be seeing the voltage and current of the battery, not necessarily what's coming in the port. So again, there could be a bit of a discrepancy there between the battery power value displayed on the um, screen recording and what's on the Tesla screen uh, behind it. So let's get into it here. We're going to be starting with the zero to 100% charging curve and let's start playing. So here we have it. We immediately see it ramp up. Uh, it hits about 170 kilowatts at 0% and then slowly starts ramping up. This is a different behavior than we've seen on my 4680 Model Y. And then at about four or 5%, we hit the 250 kilowatt. Um, the battery pack temperature is starting to rise. It is heating up that battery. Uh, it's targeting 56C and we're still holding about 250 kilowatts and it's slowly tapering down from that 0% start. Um, and then as we're going to continue on, I'm going to be keeping up, speeding up the video because that way you guys don't have to watch every little detail here, but we're still at about a thousand miles per hour of effective charging rate based on the rated efficiency, uh, 20% in about five minutes. And we're still over 200 kilowatts over six minutes in, which I think is really fantastic, especially for me coming from the 4680 Model Y. Again, slowly tapering here. Battery pack is getting a bit toasty, but this is where the vehicle wants it. Uh, and it's now starting to actively cool it. We're below 200 kilowatts at about 30%, um, but still holding a pretty strong curve and just a very slow and gradual taper and not dropping off a cliff uh, like some vehicles will do. Um, we're coming up to that 150 kilowatt mark at about 10 minutes at 38%. Um, and then this is where it would no longer make sense to uh, plug into a version three versus a version two if you have the choice there. And you would get no advantage from going to a version three. Uh, and then we're crossing up to close to 50%, which is when we'll get around 100 kilowatts. Um, but so far we're less than 15 minutes in, we're almost at 50%. Uh, and that's actually a really good performance. So again, sl still slowly tapering down versus dropping off a cliff. So we're at 50% now in under 15 minutes, still over 100 kilowatts. Uh, and here we are at 53% going under 100 kilowatts. Uh, now the vehicle, the video is speeding up a bit more here for you guys. Um, we're gonna be coming up on the 20 minute mark at about 60 or so percent. Um, which I think is a really good result. I think that's what a lot of people will do in the real world. Um, however, the charge rate is really tapering at this point. We're now below 80 kilowatts. Um, unless I had a reason to be sticking around, I would have been unplugging by now on a road trip, but uh, it's still pretty strong here. Uh, we're coming up on 70%, 25 minutes, and we'll be coming up to 80% at about 32 minutes, which is a pretty respectable result. Um, if you're having a longer charge stop, using the restroom, grabbing a snack, what have you, uh, that's a pretty reasonable timeline that could happen, especially if the charger is not immediately by whatever amenity you're trying to go to. So here we are, 80%, just under 34 minutes. We're at 50 kilowatts. So definitely, unless you have a reason to be still plugged in, you're going to be wanting to unplug at this point. 40 minutes at 86%. So again, pretty reasonable result here. Um, if you're going to be plugged in anyway, you're going to get a lot of charge in that time, but we're now at 30 kilowatts at 92%. So definitely, unless you have a reason to be still plugged in, you should be on the road by now on a road trip, or you're just wasting time. Um, 20, we're now at about 20 kilowatts at 96%. 
Uh, we're coming up on about an hour. And realistically, I would call this full-ish um, because unless you're just letting it sit there while you're doing something else, you're never gonna keep charging at this point. Um, and now we're coming up to that 99 and then crossing into 100% where the battery is just kind of uh, um, top balancing. So it says charging complete, charge limit is at 100%. It's displaying 100%. However, we are still getting about eight kilowatts into the vehicle, um, which is indicating that the battery is still taking that power and it's top balancing that battery um, in order to kind of level off the cell voltages, get them all to 4.2 uh, and really balance that out. So here we are, hour 20 minutes, it was still charging, um, but I think no one is realistically going to ever be doing that. Um, if, and I think on a road trip, you're probably only going to want to charge to about 60% or so, unless you have a strong reason to, to charge deeper. Um, but realistically in 2025, with all the Tesla superchargers that are out there, there's very little reason to do that. Um, unless you're towing or you're really going somewhere remote off of the supercharger network and kind of need that as uh, your fail safer be able to go out and back to the Tesla supercharger rather than um, being able to stay on the normal Tesla supercharger corridors. All right, so now uh, we did the zero to 100. Now let's go into the 10 to 80%, which I think is a lot more representative of what will happen in the real world. So um, we have the same stats that we're showing on the screen here. Um, and then let's just get into it here. So we're starting at 10% preconditioned battery. Of course, we immediately shoot up to about 250 kilowatts after the ramp period. Um, and we're going to, going to actually see it hold 250 kilowatts for a bit longer than we did see it before. So here we are tapering down, um, as we approach 20%. And this is, I think where most people will plug in on a road trip maybe a 5%, maybe a 15%, but I think 10% is kind of a good middle ground there that is representative of normal use case. Most people are not going to be draining it all the way. Um, as we saw before, as we get up to about 29%, we're gonna be dropping below 200 kilowatts. Um, but it's again, a very gradual drop. Uh, and I think we're gonna get some really strong power here throughout the charging curve. Um, and I'll show you guys where I would unplug again, pretty much around that 65% mark, like we saw with the zero to 100. Um, the charge curve doesn't change a whole lot going to the 10 to 80 versus the zero to 100. Um, it does push the curve up a little bit because it doesn't hit its thermal maximum until a little bit later in the curve. So it's able to hold power a little bit deeper, um, but it's not a significant change and the charge curve overall is about the same. So here we are 10 minutes. We're at 45%, so that's pretty solid. If you have another supercharger that you wanna to get to, you could charge for 10 minutes and have over 100 miles of real world range added. Uh, and then we're gonna be coming up on 50% here, still doing over 110 kilowatts, so a little bit stronger than we saw in the zero to 100, again, because of thermals. Uh, and then we're gonna be coming up on the 15 minute mark. And if you watch my 10% challenge, you'll see this result. Um, so this added over 100 miles of real world range at 80 miles per hour and 15 minutes of charging by going to about 55% state of charge. And we're gonna be coming up on 20 minutes here pretty soon and we'll be at about 65%, which I would be unplugging at this point. There's again, really no reason to charge beyond this unless you have really um, a reason to, which you'll of course know on your individual cases, but definitely get on the road in under 25 minutes or you're just wasting time in a long range Tesla. Uh, and then we're just going to continue on and it's still going to be just gradually dropping. We're going to go below 50 kilowatts as we approach 80% um, or maybe right around 50 kilowatts. Uh, and it's not bad to charge to 80%, but you're wasting time going over 65% and getting up to that 80% mark, but still 31 minutes, 10 to 80. It's not class leading. It's not impressive per se in 2025, but it's nothing to complain about either. Uh, especially adding over 56 kilowatt hours, that's easily 200-ish miles of driving range um, at reasonable speeds or about easily 150 at even higher speeds. So uh, overall, I'm very impressed with the charging curve on this car. Or actually, I wouldn't say impressed per se. Uh, it's a relative thing coming from my uh, Model Y long range, or sorry, it's a relative thing coming from my Model Y all-wheel drive, which had a pretty terrible charging curve. So 
having this pretty solid charge curve now is good. So here we have the zero to 100% charge curve with the battery temperature overlaid. Uh, again, shout out to at Austi USA on X for putting together these charts for me. So you can see the visual representation of this charging curve. Uh, and then we have the 10 to 80 as well. So you can see it's a pretty linear drop. It holds that peak rate for just a brief moment uh, and then drops down. And you can see it also increases the pack temperature uh, as we charge. And then here we have charging power um, or the charge curve and over time. And I'll be putting all of these video or all these charts on Twitter as well. So that way you guys can uh, reference them as you wish. And here we have time charging versus 70 mile per hour range. And then C rate. So C rate kind of level up or normalizes it for battery capacity. So we're hitting almost three and a half C early in the charge curve. And then even throughout the curve, we're well over one C until we get pretty deep into the battery pack. And then I do have some comparisons here, um, or a comparison here for the Model Y long range rear wheel drive versus the all wheel drive. And you can see initially the all wheel drive with the 4680 battery pack actually does spike higher in the charge curve, which you can see here by these blue bars. And then as the 4680 pack tapers down, and if you haven't already watched that video, definitely recommend doing that. Um, you'll see that the gap uh, widens pretty significantly and the rear wheel drive or the long range battery definitely has a huge advantage compared to the 4680 battery pack because it just charges so much better throughout the entire charging curve. Anyway, if you have, if you guys haven't already hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for watching.